In this video, I will explain how a CDI works and also how to figure it out if your CDI is AC or DC. For a CDI to work, you need the power in. It will be DC or AC. A DC CDI will receive the power from the battery and the AC CDI will receive the power from the stator. Both CDI will behave the same way for the rest and will do the same job. You'll need a signal in that will come from the pickup coil, a signal out that will go to the ignition coil, a kill switch to stop the CDI signal in. For a DC CDI, you can turn the switch off as it will cut the power to the CDI and at the same time stopping the engine. You can also use the kill switch. For an AC CDI, you will have a switch that when you turn it off will ground the signal in. By grounding the signal in, you cut the signal from the pickup coil and without the signal, the CDI will stop operating and stop sending the signal to the ignition coil. CDI mean capacitor discharge ignition. In your CDI, you have at least one capacitor. The capacitor is an electronic part that will get charged by the battery or stator and when it's time will release that power faster than the battery or stator can do. In our case, when the CDI will receive the signal from the pickup coil, will trigger the capacitor to supply the power to the ignition coil. This is the basic principle of the CDI. I will make the test to figure out which wire goes where and what they do. That will also include figuring out if your CDI is AC or DC. As you can see, I already make a plan of my CDI and put the related color of wire to the appropriate place on the CDI. I will use that plan to identify the wire coming out of the CDI and where they go on the machine. Before I start, I remove the positive from the battery and the negative from the battery. Uh, I got my multimeter ready uh, for the continuity test. So I'll put one lead on the negative of the battery right now. And I've got this one and still with my little staples just to test it. So now I'll just test my multimeter to make sure that it's working. and it is working. So now let's jump to the actual testing of the CDI wire. Now with my lead still on the negative of the wire, I'll start checking every single wire just to see which one is actually the ground. So now I've got constantly to test on the black and yellow wire. I've got black and white here nothing now the green also have some continuity i got this one here and this one so now we have a problem how can a ground be at three places at the same time so well the ground is not what's happening right now it's because the circuit is all wired in so now the electrical will take the shortest uh, place to go through the circuit and we're reading something else on the machine itself so here's a one that I can tell you the black and yellow here who goes to your ignition coil is also here so when we test it a few seconds ago I did have continuity but now you see this wire's got nothing on it and that's why. So now what was happening is I go through this black and yellow through the wire coming here. And now that this is a coil, it go through the coil, 
come back on that green wire right here and go touch the ground. That's why every time I was touching that it was beeping. So now the same problem happened with the other one. So we have to find a way around it. So now as I know, the black and yellow right here. So now if I move this one right here and check my black and yellow to make sure that it is the same. It's not because the wire is the same color that it will go to the same place. And I can prove it with this one is black and white. And this one also is black and white, but on different connector. So now let's test just the ignition coil. So the ignition coil, if I'm right, it should be this one here. And you see testing all the other wire, nothing's happening. So what's happening is when all your circuit is all together, uh, the electricity will take the shortest cut through your ground. So if everything is plugged, you can't test it. So now we'll have to find every single wire and mark them on the piece of paper that I already did. My next step will be to find out which one is the pickup coil that goes to the CDI plug here. So now th those one, all those wires, this one will be the stator. I have a blue white here and a black red. So now I need to identify that wire on the right side of the engine just to see which one of those wire is the pickup coil. So now tracing my wire, the one I just show up, they come right here and they go down behind that shroud. So now I'll remove it. There's two Phillips screw right here. One is here, the other one is there. Yes, I already break them in to make it faster for the video. I got this one here. And there's another one right here under. At this point, I'll be able to remove the shroud right here. So now my wire is coming here and here's the blue white that goes right here on the pickup coil. So now on my, so now as your engine turn, you see you've got a little magnet that you might not see, but there's, oh, oh, let me show you. The magnet is right here. As the magnet goes right in front, it sends a signal from here. So now I know it's the blue white wire coming here, sending it to the CDI. And this happened when, if you can see, this one is the F with the bar that tell you when the engine is fire and the T, it's the top of the engine. When the piston's at the top of that engine and the arrow right here telling you which way the engine's are spinning. So now when those line right here, cross this one right there. So now if I put it right here, now I'm top of the engine. So the piston right now is at the top of the engine, but before, so now as this engine turned this way, as we see on the arrow, when this part right here, the F with the line, line up with this one, it will send a signal to the CDI and just a fraction of a second after the engine will be on the top. So that's how your pickup coil knows when to fire with that little magnet right there. So now as I just saw, the blue and white wire is the pickup coil. So now it's coming right here from the same loom that goes around. So now what I'll do, I'll just remove this one right here. And I know the pickup coil goes in this one and this one should go to the CDI somewhere that I don't know which wire it is right now, but let's put it right here. And as I said before, there's two. There's a black and white here and a black and white there. If I test this one, I've got signal right here and also here. So that means those two wires are exactly the same. This is where I am so far. 
So I identify this plug right here being the black white to the pickup coil as we just test a few seconds ago. I've got the black yellow coming to this one here to the ignition coil and I also have this one who's black and white to the pickup coil. So I only have two wire left to ID right now, the green and the black. And somehow, something tell me that the black white to the pickup coil and the black white to the pickup coil here, one of those two will actually be the kill switch or both of them at the same time to stop the CDI from doing his job and actually stop the engine. But we'll find that in a few seconds. So now my next step will be continuity test again. I've got the ground with the ground of the, the machine. And now I'm curious, the black and white, I have two. So I just want to understand what's happening. So now I'll just put that one there. We all, well, I already know there's a kill switch in the front. So now I put this one right here and I've got a reading of 151 ohm. So now I will spin the engine by hand just to see when the magnet cross, if I will receive a signal. So now as I spin the engine, I should be able to hear a beep because that magnet will actually close the circuit for that pickup coil and we'll see. So yes, as I spin the engine, when the magnet just, you can hear the slight beep. And the ohm change. Now I want to know, is it also related with my kill switch? So yes, as I also push the kill switch, this wire become ground. So now I'll test the other one right here that I'm also interested just to see if both of those wires behave exactly the same. That means that those two black and white are actually touching together somewhere in that uh, wiring harness that I can't see. But let's test the other one too. So I still hear the beep. Okay, so let's test that kill switch. So now I know that those two wire right here, the black and white, black and white, are actually the same. Now I don't know why they have two wires, but something tell me that it's out of the video right now. The CDI is probably waiting or something happening with those two wire. When that is happening, like the kill switch, the CDI will stop sparking. This is also one of the thing, like if you're one of those that sent me email before a CDI problem, uh, I would say something like disconnect your kill switch. So now if you do the same test that I'm doing right now, soon you plug this wire, the black and white, black and white, with the ground that I've got here. If you hear that beep constantly, nonstop, that means that your kill switch would be bad. So that's why your machine is not starting. So now I update my plan. So black and white that we just test goes to the pickup coil and also goes to that kill switch. And the same thing here, black and white to the pickup coil and also the kill switch. So just make it easier for me to keep track of it. That's why when I receive email, I said, just keep track of your wire, one wire at the time and you'll figure it out. So now all those three wires are ID. So now I only have two wire left, green and black. So now the green by default should be ground because all the ground wire on my machines are green. But let's test that one and also the black one. Now for my last test, uh, I plug the battery back and get all the wire tucked in, the wire that I disconnect earlier. So now 
I put my multimeter to 20 volt DC. Uh, now, as, as I just said, the green for me should be the ground. So I already put the lead there. And the last wire I've got to ID is this one right here, the black one. If I put it there, I've got 12.3 volt. So now that means that's the power from the battery. Also, the switch is at the on position. So now if you want to test if you've got an AC or DC CDI, that's actually the easiest way. So now if I've got 12 volt here, if my CDI was an AC CDI, I would not have any power nowhere. Now that we eliminate the wire first, and I start with the easiest one, the one that don't have any voltage on it, to make it easier. So I narrow down uh, what I've got, and I finish with the power. So now that I have 12 volt, 100% sure, DC CDI. Now if I would do the exact same test, 20 volt DC, touch all my wire, well, eliminate my wire first, and the last two wires that I've got, and I've got no power when the key is at on, that means I've got an AC CDI. The other test you can do too, if I want to make sure I'm actually reading it right, I'll put it reverse and the multimeter should tell me. So now I put it right here. And as you see on the multimeter, it's a minus 12. So that means the polarities are reverse. So that tell me if it's positive or negative. So now I'm 100% sure that when I plug those two wire here, ground here, positive right here, 12.4, I'm done. Conclusion, it's only a deduction test. So we go one wire at a time and we trace them back to where they belong. So now you see I've got a list here. The power, my power is actually the green, will be the negative. Black will be positive. Signal in blue, white from the pickup coil and it turned to black, white when it goes to the CDI. The signal out who goes to the ignition coil is black and yellow. The kill switch will be black and white is actually both. So those two wire are actually connect together. Now I ID my CDI, it's a DC CDI. Green will be the ground, black positive. So now I've got many way of finding my wire. So I can read the list or I can read this. The only thing I need is a basic multimeter that got uh, power that I can check for DC. All of them have that. Uh, continuity test, all Multimeter have that too, and the resistance for the pickup coil. That's it. All basic multimeter will have those functionality. So now you can actually apply all that for any other uh, functionality on your machine. That will also include the ignition switch and any other parts. So it's only a deduction. If you take your time, you do it one wire at a time, you'll be able to trace them down. Actually, you have to do it before you cut all your wire. As some of you, I know I received some email about that. All the wires are cut, so now it makes your job a little bit harder. So take your time, do it one wire at a time, and you'll succeed.